Well, since this is my biggest video, might as well do this one. So let's address the elephant in the room. Yes, Chinese and Mongolians look quite similar. Not completely, but you know, in the same way English and French people look similar. However, unlike the English and French, the languages of the Han Chinese and the Mongols do not share a common ancestor. However, the actual people who make up the Han and the Mongol ethnicities of today do, but a very ancient ancestor at that. What we call the East Asian ethnicity split off from the Caucasian ethnicity around 40 to 60,000 years ago. Interestingly, the Caucasian and East Asian ethnicities split off in the Iranian Peninsula, with the ancestors of the European and Middle Eastern peoples going west and mixing with the Neanderthals, and the ancestors of the Sino-Tibetans and Mongolians moving east towards India before settling in the Tibetan Plateau. Later, the first humans of Asia would move northeast towards the Yellow River and farther up into Mongolia. So clearly the Mongolic and sino tibetan peoples split off from each other sometime during this northern migration. Let's look at genetics to see just how similar the Han Chinese are to their Mongol neighbors up north. Looking at the Hablo group map, we can see that, at least paternally, the Mongolic peoples are much more connected with their fellow Eurasian steppe cousins to the west, with the Han having more in common with the Malaysians to the south. This makes sense as the Mongols conquered the Eurasian steppe and Austronesians originated in Taiwan, whose ancestors mainly came from mainland China, and whose descendants would go on to populate the Pacific Ocean. Despite this difference in lineage, the Han and the Mongols do share one interesting genetic trait, an absence of the ABC11 gene. This absence is responsible for dry earwax and a difference in how humans sweat. It is very unclear as to why this arose in East Asia, but probably arose out of a need to adapt to the cold, dry Gobi Desert, or possibly arose as far back as to combat the dry cold of the Tibetan Plateau. A more obvious similarity between the Mongols and the Han Chinese is the presence of the epicantal fold over the eye, giving the signature East Asian look. This could either have been an adaptation to the dust of the Gobi Desert, or could have arisen through people finding these eyes attractive. Either way, this adaptation is not exclusive to these two groups, or even East Asians, as epicantal folds can be found in the Khoisan people of Africa, the Sami people of northern Scandinavia, and randomly throughout Europe, and these people have no East Asian DNA. Now that we have looked at some similarities between the Han and the Mongols, let's look at some differences. The Mongols speak a language family that only really has some vague similarities to the Turkish language family. The Han speak a language that is part of the same family that Tibetan is in. Historically, the Mongols were tribal herders who ventured out into the steppe to hunt animals and graze their horses. The Han Chinese were one of the oldest civilizations in the world, with the Yangtze and Yellow River Basin being unified into one kingdom or another throughout much of history. The Mongols and the Chinese definitely interacted with each other, with empires on both sides taking over each other's territory. However, the Chinese and the Mongols are not a related ethnic group, with the Mongols having more in common with the Crimean Tatars than with the Han, and the Han having more in common with Tibetans than with the Mongols. So thank you guys so much for watching that video, and remember to subscribe if you have not yet.